I hired another dentist, partnered with another one. I am in a DSO space, so I was able to talk to the support team through my DSO, Heartland Dental, and say, hey, I need another dentist because what I'm trying to accomplish, I can't do hygiene checks and see all these patients and get 120 new patients a month that just need checkups. There's also stages that I've, everybody I've talked to of going through and actually growing your arches, right? So it's like doing one arch a month, and then there's like doing three arches a month, but then it gets to the place where you're doing like two or three a week, and it really changes the dynamic of your workday and your practice and your staff. I think for me, it was going from this place where it was kind of a chill atmosphere. I had enough time to plan my cases. Welcome back to another episode of the Full Arch Advantage podcast. I'm your host, Gary Bird. I'm the founder of SMC National, where we help offices just like yours level the playing field against the big guys out there that are trying to gobble up all your new patients. And we're going to help you grow the way that you deserve. And today I have Dr. Jacob Berger, who runs a practice down south, and he's going to share his journey of going from zero arches to 10 arches a month. And he's going to share the good, the bad, the ugly, and what he wish he would have known when he got started. You're going to glean a lot from this. And one thing to understand is Dr. Jacob, he actually is with Heartland. So he's going to share all of his strategies, share his whole playbook. You're going to really enjoy this. Stay tuned. All right, we are live and I have Dr. Jacob Berger here. And you know, I, I met you many, many years ago and we did a podcast together and I it was a great podcast. It was all about Mamba mentality. And you were just like, man, I love getting after things. I love... Uh, just the hard work and the process. And at that time, you were just starting your full arch journey. You were just getting to the place where you were learning how to place full arch implants for patients. And right now, you're at the place now where you're placing eight to 10 a month. So I asked you to come on today and talk through a little bit about your journey of what it's like to go from doing zero arches a month to going to doing 10 or more arches a month. Yeah, man. Um, well, spot on. I, I do love the journey sometimes more than I am seeking a result. And uh, like, I know what the result is that I want, but there's something about that journey. Um, I actually, right around the time that I made the commitment to doing like just full arch dentistry, just full arches and being able to go from uh, maybe dropping one or two implants here and there to like legit, that was my focus. I took my dental assistants to a breakfast and I remember sitting at breakfast with three of them. And I told them what the game plan was going to be and how I have some strategies for it. And it's going to be a long road, but a fun road. We all get in our separate cars, but one dental assistant, Daniel, he jumped in the passenger seat with me. And I was like, you ready for this? You think it's going to work? And he's like, no, nah, even if it doesn't, we're going to learn so much along the way. So I had that mentality going in there that even if I didn't have success at month six, or even if I didn't have my version of success by month 12, that I would at least learn a crap ton along the way that is um, not measurable. You can't really measure how much you'll learn. And maybe I decided at month 12, I'm not going to do this anymore, but at least I learned a crap ton about it. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So that's why we're on this call, right? If it didn't go well, I probably wouldn't yeah. be talking to you. <laughs> um, exactly. So, and, it, and it did because uh, the, the focus was there and I, I wanted the pressure of not having patients in my building unless they were full arch. And what I mean by that is like, I knew that if I kept trying to dabble in it, if I kept trying to um, maybe do two arches a month while doing regular dentistry, and then do three arches a month while doing regular dentistry, one, that's not fair to that patient. Like that's in my opinion. And I know some doctors who dabble and they're great at it. They do one a month and that's perfect for them. And they're great at it. I just know myself. And I know that if I'm rusty, I wasn't going to be great at it if I only did one or two a month while still trying to do Invisalign, still trying to do veneers, still trying to do sedation with wisdom teeth. Uh, so that journey, man, really was just that like head down. If I don't have full arch patients, then I'm not going to be doing much dentistry, but that's okay because that's the pressure that I wanted and the pressure I needed, man. Hey, sorry to interrupt the show, but I want to make sure that you're going to Dicoma 2024. It's July 10th through the 12th. And guess what? We are going to be speaking on the main stage and we're going to be hosting a boot camp as well. And we want to give away some free tickets. So how do you win these free tickets? You go to smcnational.com, click the little bar that says enter to win free tickets to Dicoma, and then you submit your information and everybody's a winner. We're going to be giving a discount to everybody who enters and we're going to be giving away some free tickets to the conference itself and to the boot camp. Make sure you sign up for these right away. Back to the show. Um, how, so yeah, how, sure question on that. So uh, yeah, I question on that because I think what happens a lot of times with dentist is that for you to do what you did, burn the boat, so to speak, where you're like, I'm only doing full arch. 
you have to give up a lot, right? There's a dentistry yeah. that you're giving up. So did you give that dentistry to another dentist to do? Man. So not only do you have to give it up, but like you're giving up something that you probably are good at and can do easily. And that's probably <laughs> what makes it even harder. Uh, so I hired another dentist. Uh, partnered with another one. I, I am in a DSO space. So I was able to talk to the support team through my DSO Heartland Dental and say, hey, I need another dentist because what I'm trying to accomplish, I can't do uh, hygiene checks and see all these patients and get 120 new patients a month that just need checkups. So we need to hire somebody who can take all my patients from me. And what was tough about it is you go through this phase where each one of those patients say, but I want to see you, Dr. Berger, but you've always been my dentist, Dr. Berger, but I live in your community, Dr. Berger. And I had to keep saying like, no, you can trust this new dentist. I'm not doing this type of dentistry anymore. Uh, but yeah, I turned over probably three or 4,000 patients to my new partner and said, from now on, I won't see any new patients who walk through this building just to get established. You'll see all that. And what's hard about it is like, I'll get a patient who says, I go to the gym with him and I want him to do my Invisalign. Yeah. But I know if I take that on, it's easy, it's fast, it's good money. I know how to do it. It's still fun. I still like doing dentistry. You don't have to, like, I don't dislike the other sides of dentistry. I had to say no to it though, because I was committed to my mission. Uh, it's funny that our first podcast was about mama mentality, but there's this video by Kobe before the off season. He said that um, I signed a contract with myself. I did a handshake mm. with myself. And I didn't want to go to the gym and work out three times a, a day, but I signed that contract to myself. I have to, like, there is no, I'm tired today. So I, I, maybe that's maybe an extreme analogy, but I can't do that Invisalign. I signed a contract with myself and I can't do that because what that tells me is I need a backup plan uh, yeah. or I want to have some income source and it's going to put me in a position where I keep doing Invisalign. What it also did, man, is I think this is important for doctors who get a partner is what does it tell that partner? It tells that partner, hey, I still want the easy stuff or I still want the money making stuff or I still want what's fun. It's like, nah, bro, I committed to this. You can have all of those patients and where it actually pays off later is when that full arch patient walks in to see my partner on accident or maybe they sat in the chair as a new patient and they do need full arch dentistry. My partner sends them to me right away. It doesn't mm. even think twice because they remember how many times I turned down the easy Invisalign, how many times I turned down the easy veneer on number eight or nine. Yeah, I love that. And so let's I, let's put some numbers to that. Did you have to actually find, did that financially impact you when you first got started with this? Did you have to give up a little bit? Yeah. It does, right? It, I did, I did. I didn't know how many months I would go down and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and this type of a, um, income wise, right? And, and boredom, boredom went up and money went down. Uh, I didn't want to be bored, but I also knew that what I needed to do with that extra time was I needed to talk to marketing teams. I needed to talk to implant uh, uh, yeah. funnels. I needed to do more social media posts, or I needed to call my new patients and introduce myself, maybe train my team better. So I had to use my downtime, but downtime means less money. And so I did have maybe a 30 to 40% decrease uh, the first month that I passed over all those patients. And uh, then it was another month just like that. No different. It didn't go 30 to 40% <laughs> yeah. more. It was just another 30, 30 to 40% uh. deficit. And I did that for about three months. And then I think I had a month where I did like three arches at 25K each. Those 75K or from those three arches helped get me back to what I was used to. I did still do some implant surgery. So I probably should add that a transparency. I was still doing yeah. implant surgeries. So like my partner would send me a couple single units or a sinus bump, or I would sedate her patient and do like um, four wisdom teeth and a crown. So I had to supplement my dentistry somehow, but I wasn't going to do it with being picky and choosy and showing my, uh, my partner that I was just going to have cake and eat it too. You know, I was, I can't do that to her. Um, so yeah, man, there was that little moment where I knew I was going to go backwards financially, but I had to think about the end in mind, man. That's so good. So now, and now let's talk about the good part, not just the negative part. Yeah. Now you're probably doing a lot better financially, right? So you're now you're, you're doing the dentistry you want to do that yeah. you set out to do, and you're probably making more money too, right? We don't have to go into all the details. I just want to call out the good side of it. Yeah. So, and I knew that was going to happen eventually. I, I don't know if it's like the instinct or the gut, or maybe I'm overly optimistic sometimes or an optimist by nature, but I knew that day would come and I did the math. And I'm like, if the going rate for an arch is 25K in my area, I just need to do eight of those in a month 
to produce what I was doing, doing a lot of dentistry. So I was seeing, let's say, 100 new patients a month. I was seeing, let's say, 20 patients of, of dentistry. I could do 200K worth of dentistry in, in this area in Florida. I knew that that was eight arches. So eight arches was my goal. I set that goal way back then. But now that I'm doing eight arches, yes, it is nice to do the dentistry I love, seeing less patients. Um, I didn't know this part, and I think this is you know a straight up message directly to all the dentists out there who want to get in this and they're not already in it. Is it doesn't mean you do less dentistry uh, or you're you're more bored and have more free time to check your phone. I'm probably busier now than I ever was because it's a whole new type of dentistry. So you're on the phone with your lab, you're on the phone with an implant company, you're learning how to place pterygoid implants, you're doing your recertification for sedation, uh, you're doing design changes on your on your hybrids, you're learning what 3D printing is and, and how to stain and glaze when it comes in. So it's a whole new type of busy. It's just not a busy of 27 patients. It's like five today, but it was a busy freaking day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very busy. It's a different, different kind of busy. You said that perfectly. Now, which part of the stage, so we, the beginning is hard, right? Because there's a massive amount of faith and you're kind of jumping into the abyss. You're jumping into the unknown. And that's the hardest thing to do in business uh, yeah. is, is just doing something that you just have no idea about uh, the, about the business side of it. You're, you, you, you kind of have an idea, but you don't know for sure. That's hard. But then there's, there's also stages that I've, everybody I've talked to of going through and actually growing your arches, right? So it's like, the first doing one arch a month and then there's like doing three arches a month, but then it gets to the place where you're doing like two or three a week and it really changes the dynamic of your workday and your practice and your staff. So what, what stage was the hardest after I know the initial part's really, really hard, but what stage so far has been the hardest part for you as you've grown that you had to really work through? So there's been a couple of times where let's say I had a month where we did 10 arches and I remember one of these months specifically where they didn't come uh, evenly. It was like 10 arches were all in the last two and a half weeks of that month. So like the first week and a half was chill. I wonder if we're going to get anybody uh, to fill these slots. But I knew I had like 10 scheduled for the end of the month. And um, during that time, it's like you do a surgery on Tuesday. You're delivering some some prototypes on Wednesday. Now you got to do surgery again on Thursday. Now you have to deliver again on Friday and then you get a slight break. But then next Tuesday, you're doing two arches again. So I think for me, it was going from this place where it was kind of a chill atmosphere. I had enough time to plan my cases. I had enough time to take my photos and to call my lab to now it's like the second I hang up and, and clock out for the day mentally, like my brain is already thinking about the next guy or gal that's on my schedule tomorrow or the next day. So I think there's that phase where it's like, OK, one a week. My brain can rest. But when yeah. you're doing four arches in a week or six arches in a week, it's a, it's a stressful week that I enjoy because I load up my own sedation meds. I load up my own implant inventory or I coach my team on it. Um, so I think maybe when we hit that double digit month for the first time, then you hear doctors who are doing like 20 arches a month. And I'm like, I never want to do that much. My back can't handle that. My brain can't handle that. Good for them. That's a whole different animal. And I, I appreciate dentists out there that can do that. But I'm happy with 10 arches, man. I'm happy with that because I, I could see how 12, 16, 18, 22 could be a lot for my brain and for my team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going back, if you, you know, a lot of people that are listening to this type of show are going to be people who are doing one arch, two arches, three arches. They're probably not doing 40, 50 arches, right? Um, and so going back in your brain, back who you were before and as, as you went through this journey, what is a piece of advice that you would give to yourself? Um, if you could go back and talk to yourself, what, what would be that piece of advice that would have helped you through some of those rockier times? I think one thing I would have done more is I would have shadowed more dentists, like went and visited them and watched them do full art surgeries, their style, their way a few more times. I think I had almost 50 under my belt before I went and watched my now mentor, uh, who yeah. I look up to. I call him when I have questions. I call him the day. Dr. Lynch, students. right? Yeah. Dr. Jeff Lynch, you know, I'll call him yeah. the day before surgery to look over a case. But there's 40 or 50 arches out there that I think were done well, but they could have been done better or more efficiently. But I didn't have a mentor at that time. I didn't have maybe a, uh, a surgery style to mimic or to mirror. It was just my own style. So I would say I wish that version of me would have went and shadowed him earlier on. And I would have seen some of his style earlier on, maybe even seen what's possible. Even if I can't mimic all of it, 
just to see him go from a 7.30 start and be walking out of the room at 12.30, that would have been neat for me to see and even know that you can actually do two arches in five hours. Like my brain didn't know that. I thought, <laughs> you know, I thought it takes eight hours for everybody. So I think the younger version of me would have seen that a little bit sooner. That's great. That's that's a great piece of advice. And then what's your like future look like? So now that you've gone from zero, you've gone to, you know, 10 or even sometimes more arches in a month, what does your future look like? Like where, what are you aiming for? What's your next big thing that you want to try to hit the next big milestone? I think I would like to be able to, if I could paint a picture of what the next six months look like, it would be that I hit eight to 10 arches consistently every single month without like making it in by, you know, like a a clutch shot or a clutch last minute consultation. It'd be nice to just always have eight to 10 on my schedule. Sometimes we'll have six on my schedule going into like the last day of the month. And then a patient says, I'm interested. And I'm like, ah, we hit our goal. But I don't like to always be hitting clutch shots like that. Like it'd be nice if it was always scheduled. So I think a picture perfect world for me, man, and I don't know if that'll ever exist, is just to always have eight to 10 arches on my schedule consistently and to be doing them with a nice little flow, five hour surgeries, get them in and out, pretty, uh, really pretty uh, um, prototypes, really pretty solid results. And then probably having a dentist visit four of those eight arches or four of those 10 arches a month as I maybe uh, pour into somebody else who's trying to get into this. So I'm currently building out an expansion. We need a bigger surgical center. If you picture a surgery, I got one assistant handing me instruments, one assistant handing me implant stuff. I have my anesthesiologist, or if I'm doing the anesthesia, I have my anesthesia assistant. And then I'll have a guest coming to visit. And that's a really busy room uh, with the with the close quarters we're in now. So I'll, I'll have a bigger suite. So I'll have the ability to uh, maybe host a guest doctor and I think I do better surgeries when I have somebody there. I could be wrong. And maybe my dental yeah. assistant, my dental assistant probably be like, ah, you take longer because you talk too much. Um, but I feel like I'm on my A game and I'm super high focus when I have somebody else watching me. Um, but I'm sure my results are the same regardless. I just know that my brain feels like I have to explain what I'm doing and I remind myself why I do what I do when I have a guest. So I think that's what my goal is, man. That's what I'm shooting for. I'm not shooting for 12, 20 arches a month. I like this eight to 10, but consistently, I don't want to have a 12 and then a four and then a 16 and then a two. Like that's miserable. Yeah. It makes, it makes your life hard. Yeah. Cause then you're, you're too, you're overworked and it breaks your systems and then you're underworked and then back and forth. I, I totally hear you. Well, that that's been awesome. And now doctor, uh, I know you're really, really popular on Instagram and you communicate with a ton of doctors on there. Would you mind just sharing before we part ways, uh, your Instagram handle with everybody so they can, they can connect with you and follow you. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, and to all those listening at Dr. Jacob Berger. So uh, all you have to do is do dr. Jacob Berger, B E R G E R. And we do post smile makeover before and afters. I try to do one every three posts and, uh, 90% of them are full arch implant cases. Every now and then a full mouth rehab case will get on there, but I pretty much describe what we did for that patient. And then we post some fun videos on there, but I use my page both for the doctors to be entertained or enjoy or inspired, but also for new patients. So if you're looking for that um, blood and guts and you want to see the bone <laughs> being mowed down and uh, implants going up in the eyeball and stuff, I don't post that because I, I, I use my social media for yeah. future patients as well. And they don't want to see yeah. that. The patients don't want to see that. <laughs> no, really smart. Don't. Um, so I hope that helps. You need and, to, maybe and, have you have you thought about starting a doctor page? Just I did doc, think just for that. The- yeah, I did. Or maybe even creating a subscription model where you can subscribe and then you get to see the gory stuff. But then now that requires me being hyper uh, focused on photography during surgery. Mm, and I'm already yeah. hyper focused on the surgery itself. And a yeah, lot of my yeah. videos, pictures and posts, like they take time and energy and focus. Yeah, do. And, uh, and that's for the non-surgery days. And so right now I think I'm good, man. <laughs> that's awesome man you're doing a great job love your content thanks for coming on and thanks for always just being available to help other people i there was really no upside here for you to do this podcast and but you as soon as i said hey i want to talk about your journey from the last time we talked you 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 were willing to come on so i really value that about you and uh i really value the work that you do and and dr lynch too we just had dr lynch on recently he's the exact same way where he's just like man i love dr Berger. i love helping people so thanks for thanks for uh, being willing to help other people. Hey, you're welcome, man. I'm glad I could do this for you.